Welcome to video number six in the Critter Saga. Now, the first thing I'm gonna start with is why we call it Critter. We've had five, actually six different RVs if you count the total, but we started with Class A's, and then a Class C, and a Class B, a Class B Plus, and then that total. And all of them we named because they had kind of personalities, and once we figured that out, we gave them a name. And this one we named Critter, for a number of reasons. One, it's got a lift kit. It's got all-terrain tires, all-wheel drive. It gets where the other ones can't go. And it can stay there longer because it's got a lot of solar. It's got 800 amps of lithium power. And it goes further and stays longer than the other ones. It's also compact and it's gray. So it reminded me a little bit of a raccoon or a possum or maybe even an armadillo, all critters. Therefore, that's how it got its name. We actually even picked up a little mascot for it uh, on a cruise down in Mexico. And if that's not a critter, I don't know what is. So enough of that. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the features driving the 2024 Coachman Cross Trail Extreme Model 20XG. So we're going through Oregon right now. And one of the things, the major thing I want to talk about was the mileage. It gets better than most. And a lot of your, you know, in Class A, obviously, you're going to get 6 to 9. Um, class C's, you're going to get, it depends. We had a tip and weight pair, a 2020 model, and it was a diesel engine. We got about 18. Um, and then we had a 2022 Thor Sequence, a B class, and we got about 18 or 20 on that. I'm only getting about 15 on this on a good day with good conditions, conditions not so good, maybe a headwind, maybe 13, maybe a little bit less. And there are reasons for that and there are trade-offs. And as much as I like getting good gas mileage, the trade-offs in this one are worth it. So what we've got that are impacting your miles per gallon, number one, and probably the most, the biggest impact is gonna be the fact that this is all wheel drive. Now I like that because again, you can go further places where others can't go. It also has a lift kit. It's got all-terrain tires. Both of those things affect your miles per gallon. Both of them are trade-offs that I would keep and, and like having this. And the fourth one, which depending on the conditions has a bigger impact, that is a second alternator in the engine that is feeding your lithium batteries. And I can actually tell the difference when, when our batteries are lower and it's constantly feeding to when the batteries are at 100% and that alternator is not really going. So kind of think of it as uh, having your air conditioner on high in your car, that's gonna give, that's gonna impact your gas mileage compared to not having your air conditioner on at all. So that's a little bit what that second alternator is doing. But again, a very good trade-off. I'd rather have that while we're driving, feeding the batteries than while we're parked and happen to use a uh, generator, which we do have the generator on board as well. Also, we're full-timers. So rather than the weekenders that won't have very much with them or vacation, we've got everything that we need with us indefinitely. Um, so a little more weight than you would have otherwise. So that explains the mileage between 13 and 15 miles per gallon. Now, the other thing I want to talk about in this video is some of the features that the Ford Transit has that even the, the uh, Mercedes uh, Sprinter doesn't have, or at least didn't when we had it. And I don't think there are many changes between the 2020 and today. I've watched a lot of videos on the 23 chassis, and the not the 24, but the 23 chassis, and I don't see any differences between what we had, which was a 2019 chassis. Um, it had a lane keep assist, and that's one of the two features on this that I put at number one. Uh, the intuitive or smart cruise control is the other one. Those are two features I absolutely love, make it much easier to drive, and you can drive it longer more comfortably than you can other ones. And this one for me, I can drive longer and more comfortably than anything that we've had before. Um, so the lane keep assist is over here, and you set it, you set the distance you want to follow at, and you set the speed that you're willing to go at, and you can see that it's on right now. And it's the little green uh, car sideways in the dash. Now, if I go too far to the left or too far to the right, that's going to change colors. And if I continue that, it's going to uh, gently steer me back to the center of the lane. 
Now in the Tiffin, the Mercedes Sprinter that we had, it used the braking to get you back in your lane, and that was irritating, and I hated that, and I generally turned it off. So it made that feature worthless. On this, uh, it's much more intuitive, it's much more comfortable, it's less evasive, and it works really well, and I like it a lot. Also, uh, obviously if you turn your blinker on, it knows you intend to change lanes, and it won't do anything. But if you don't turn your blinker on and you go to change lanes and you keep forcing it, it'll let you change lanes and it'll just vibrate your steering wheel a little bit to remind you that that's on. So it's a great feature. I love it. The other one is the intuitive or the smart cruise control. Again, once you set that, uh, you set the distance to, that you're going to follow and then you just let it go. So those are two great features that I enjoy. Obviously, it also has Android Auto and Auto CarPlay. It has its own navigation if you don't want to use yours for that, and those are fantastic. Uh, the screen is great, uh, and we've had some very good ones. I've had them where you've got a mouse on your steering wheel for this and a mouse over here for this, and those are good too. Um, I think I like this a little bit better. You have minimal hard keys, a volume and a power on your hard key, and then you've got your uh, also very important feature on this. Because it is all-wheel drive, but you do have some input that you can make on that. For example, right now, it's a little bit rainy and wet, but I can still drive in Eco because I don't need the other two modes, which is uh, uh, mud and rut and ice and snow or ice and slippery. And I've used both of those features, and they work really, really well. We've gone over passes where it was snow and it was icy and there was, you know, uh, snow on the road, and you put that in, and you just feel rock solid. Um, and, and once you put those features in, it determines what, where the power is going to go and distributes it that way. Now, it's got dualies on the back, so again, you know, it feels a, little, a lot more solid than the, the Dodge Pro Master that we had uh, in the Thor sequence, the B-Class. And this is referred to as a B-plus, or maybe a C-minus. B-plus sounds a little bit better. It doesn't have a bed uh, over the cab, but... It, does, it is a cutaway chassis, so it's bigger than a regular van's going to be. Um, we, we, we've spent years in different RVs, full-timing all the time, and did a lot of research on this one because we wanted to see if we could get the best of all worlds. Um, and I think we've hit it as close as we've ever gotten. There may be something out there that's a little better. I've not seen it. I've not found it. And when I thought we found it in this, and we've now had it for a month and a half, say, about 4,000 miles on it, I'm going to say it exceeds my expectations so far. We've not had any issues with electrical, with plumbing, with mechanical, any of those things that we've had, even with other brand new RVs. So I'm really impressed. We're doing a lot of modifications to it. And that's going to probably be the longest video we have when we go into all of those. Um, which I think everybody does to make it your own. So that's going to wrap up video number six. Look forward to seeing you on number seven.